Captain's log, date August 27th, 1942. I have just received command of the USS Sailfish, a Sargo-class submarine. The submarine is a vast improvement from our outdated sugar boat. The Sargo-class submarine, though, is by no means revolutionary. But it does boast a speed of 21 knots and a range of 11,000 nautical miles. On top of this, our boat has been equipped with improved air search radar as well as surface search radar. These will no doubt be valuable tools in the months ahead. Our orders are to proceed to the Solomon Islands and patrol the waters around Bougainville. At exactly 22:21, we slipped out of our home port of Brisbane and began the long journey up the eastern Australian coast. Once we have arrived in the Solomon Sea, we will engage Japanese merchant ships and warships at will. Alright everyone, welcome back to more Silent Hunter 4 Wolves of the Pacific. And it's been a hot minute since I've played this, and I apologize for that. It's been a little hectic, and uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to apologize for that. But I should start uploading a little more regularly now. And as you can see, we have our new boat, the USS Sailfish. Isn't she a beauty? Let's take a look at her. Even though you've already seen her from the captain's log and the intro. But, uh... Hey, it's a pretty nice looking boat if I know you say so myself. Definitely looks a lot like the porpoise class submarine, which and the salmon, even though it uh I mean it pretty much is the salmon. Uh it's just a little better from what I've read, but no big differences between the two. One thing we do have though is here we have surface search radar as well as the improved SJ radar, which is air search. So uh, we should be fairly well protected from Japanese aircraft as well as vessels. And uh, we'll be able to hunt a little easier as well. The ship, or boat I should say, has quite a complement of torpedoes. Um, let's see, 8, 12, uh, so 22 torpedoes. And uh, we have the Mark 14, so they're still problematic uh, until mid-1943, as that says. So, uh, well, we'll still have a lot of duds to deal with. How wonderful. Uh, here's our systems. Here, I uh, replaced the stern gun mounting for the bow. I prefer the bow. That's just me. And uh, as you can see, we have the SJ surface search radar. And the SD, surf SD is the air search. I uh, misspoke earlier. I apologize for that. Okay, and we'll go to our crew. We had to get a lot of crew members this time. And uh, the game wouldn't let me pick out enough of them to um, you know, fill our crew up. So we have the crew berthing for our deck watch whenever they come in. Still not enough slots for them, but um, they'll, they'll figure it out, I suppose. Uh, we have a full damage control team. I figured they'll switch between the deck gun and uh, flat gun for now. Um, what else, what else? Let's take a look at the interior, shall we? It's definitely a lot roomier than our previous S-boat. Also, the uh, Lights are red at night, which is uh, cool. It's definitely more it's not Das Booty, I guess. Das Boat, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Some people get angry when you call it Das Boot. And uh, I'm just a simple American, I apologize. <laughs> anyway, here we have our Christmas tree. Very detailed. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a nice boat. I, I can't complain. I cannot complain. Uh, so we're we're plucking away here. We're making progress. We're in the Coral Sea at the moment, and uh, we're going to the Solomon Islands. And this is an interesting patrol area because us, the United States, have just captured Guadalcanal. And uh, I don't know if we've actually captured it at this point, and they're still kind of fighting for it. We did get a radio message. For units in the Solomon Islands, there are indications that IGN resupply mission will attempt to land troops on Galata Canal. I think they're still kind of fighting for it. Uh, the Japanese are constantly landing ships and supplies there. Uh, because what actually happened is, after the Marines landed on Guadalcanal, the Imperial Japanese Navy and the U.S. Navy got in a giant fight, and uh, the U.S. Navy had to flee the area as uh, the Japanese funneled troops and supplies into Guadalcanal. Very interesting story, and uh, when they landed, the, only one person got injured, and it was because he uh, was opening a coconut, and he cut himself. Uh, they landed completely unopposed, which I always I thought is very interesting. 
and oh boy, 07, 17. It's heading south very fast, so that means pretty much one thing. So let's go ahead and uh, the first emergency dive in our new boat. Let's go for it. Let's go, boys. Let's get under there quickly. Let's see how fast we dive. Let's time us. Now this is a really a fleet boat. It's definitely a step in that direction. Uh, it has a top speed of 20 to 21 knots and uh, a range of about 11, 11, yeah, 1100, 11,000. Oh my God, I'm sorry, nautical miles. Um, so it can definitely keep up with the fleet for the most part, and it definitely has the range and the armament. It has quite a few torpedoes. 22 torpedoes is nothing to laugh at, and we are diving. Fast as hell. Wow. A lot faster than our S-boat. What? 40 seconds? Forty-five. About 50 seconds. Probably 55. I started a little late. So it takes about a minute. And these are very good conditions. If it was rougher outside, I, I think we would take a little longer. But we'll go ahead and uh, slow down and uh, turn that off. I'm surprised of actually how fast uh, this boat can dive. It can dive about the same time as a Type 9 U-boat. Alright, well we're at 165 feet. We'll probably uh, chill out around here, right? Why is there only dive one dive planesman? Why is that? Oh, key bindings. Oh, key bindings. Probably because the crew on the they're on watch. They only have one guy. Well, sorry, sorry I had to wake you up, pal. But uh, I need two of you, especially in a tense situation like this. Could man battle stations, but I guess it's not that tense. Anyway, I'll stop babbling on about useless garbage, and we will head onward to uh, the Solomon Sea, and hopefully we find some shipping this patrol. I suppose we will. Anyway. I will uh, get back to you folks momentarily. Uh, we have a merchant and one of these is a warship. Let's go ahead and turn uh, somewhat to a, an attack angle and see if we can get these guys. I was looking, as you can see, uh, there have been two messages. We've been late for both of them, but uh, of IGN units resupplying Guadalcanal heading through the slot. Now the slot is what the Americans call the New Georgia Sound, this area here. So. Uh, if we get another mes message, which I'm sure we will, of Japanese units uh, resupplying Guadalcanal, we will head there at top speed and try to bag us a, a convoy. But anyway, the the uh, the objective at hand, we have these two vessels here. Uh, three, ooh, four, another warship. And it looks like. They are heading straight for us. Let's go ahead and go up to periscope depth. Oh, this is going to be a fun engagement. We're going to hit them in the deep waters here, especially if they're coming straight for us. You now they could always change course or something like that, so you keep that in mind. Let's check it out. And they're pretty much dead ahead, five degrees. Go ahead and close that. See if we can uh, spot them visually. And oh boy, wow, okay. Whew. All right, this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be fun, 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 fun. They are very close. All right, let's go ahead and uh, three minute them here. No, and mark, god damn it, yeah. So it's more in the center. All right. So I'm assuming that's the lead escort here. We're not going to hit the escort. We're going to looks like three merchants, two escorts. Probably hit these two. They look the biggest. I'm not sure about that third one in the line. But uh, no, we won't necessarily know until we get closer, which we are. <laughs> they are. We are on a collision course. Which I don't like. Let's turn at an angle here. 
All right, we're at two minutes now. We're heading on three. 2.30. Is there more of them? No, I think we can see them all through our periscope at this point. Oh, they kind of snuck up on us. Oh, yeah. Large convoy, apparently. Oh, boy. Seems like they're heading kind of quick. All right. Four, three, two, one. Mark. Okay. We'll keep it running for six minutes. Yeah, they are kind of uh, moving at a fair clip. Uh, eight knots. Let's work for silent running. Yeah, it looks like there's another escort out there doing sweeping action. So it looks like three escorts. Main battle stations. Man, I love that sound effect so much. I haven't played in a while, so I'm not going to do anything too crazy. But I'm hoping we can bag ourselves a, a Japanese merchant ship here. Moving fast, closing. I hope they haven't detected us. They are moving fairly quickly, though. All right, let's go ahead and turn to uh, pretty much make this a 90 degree angle here. And uh, let's turn that godforsaken thing off. <laughs> I spy my little eye. There they are. Oh, Jesus. Hello. Uh, it's definitely Japanese. <laughs> probably radio this uh, this thing in maybe get some b-17s from Henderson field to uh, come and bomb this thing but uh, I'm sure they have more pressing matters Henderson field being the airfield on Guadalcanal that uh, we captured the Japanese built this really nice runway they're in the airfield complex you know pretty much post-war stuff it was really nice Americans took a good look at that and were like, yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> Swaii. Okay, I'm getting kind of scared here. The sucker's pretty close. Oh boy. Okay, well, I guess we'll try to identify these guys in the meantime. I have a feeling we might get detected and this will get cut a little short. I just have a bad feeling about this. And look at them. Alright, let's turn. Let's keep turning. Let's just get our torpedoes away. Alright, I've seen this before. Oh, it's definitely a Yada, not a Yamoto. Uh, merchant shipping, yes. Oh my gosh. I'm having issues today, so <laughs> sorry about that. Alright, so I think this is like a composite freighter or something weird like that. No. Yeah, yeah. All right. Learning the ship names in Salt Hunter 4 as well. So now I have three and four in the bag. It looks like another composite freighter. Oh, they're kind of small ships. Do they really need four escort vessels for these two little peep squeaks? Oh, well. Anyway. Let's lower our scope. I do not want... That to be the reason we get detected. Oh gosh. Sorry you can hear my keyboard clicking as well. Ooh. He's right there. It looks like he's still going on course. Let's take a peek. Oh wow, he is so close. <laughs> Oh, uh, don't like that. He can probably spot my periscope, but uh. All right, time to take a shot. Let's plug all this stuff. No, oh no. I hope that did not mess up my recording once. Okay, 
hopefully OBS you start recording I think it did okay it should be alright uh, I accidentally clicked off my screen and I have dual monitors so that makes it a little uh, it just worries me I accidentally clicked off and it uh, sent me to the Windows screen uh, yeah he's about at 90 he should be and speed we established was 8 knots I hope that is still accurate if not, uh, well, we'll find out. All right, let's turn on the tracking. Torpedo settings. All right, we'll probably shoot. I'm debating one and one. We'll shoot two at this one and one at the other. How about that? We'll do contact. No offset angle. Torpedo depth. What is the ship's depth? The draft is 18 feet. We'll set it at 10. So this one at 10 as well. And contact speed high on both. Come on. All right. I think we should be okay. Open tube one and tube two. This is kind of late. Should have shot earlier. I was too distracted by the warship. All right, two torpedoes away. Oh, there's Japanese writing on it. If anyone that's Japanese know what that knows uh, what that says, uh, let me know. Be interested to find out. All right, this fella, he's definitely at a, a little steeper angle. They uh, not like the Atlantic convoys. They kind of space their ships out a little bit. All right, tube three. Let's get the hell out of here. All right, let's take a look. Wow, that was so far off. What's wrong? What happened? Eight knots. Well, <laughs> now they know we're here. I don't understand what went wrong there. No way they were going that much faster, right? Offset angle, torpedo depth is right. The offset angle is okay. Why is this one circle running? That's what that one there is doing. Those other ones, and there's a destroyer. Well, so uh, this is pretty deadly here. It could swing back around and kill us, but I think we're diving. So hopefully, we don't know about that though. <laughs> I don't understand what I did wrong there. Maybe it was just awake and they accelerate really quickly. Wow, well, now we're in for a tough ride though. With all these guys. One, two, yeah, wow, well, three escorts for two <laughs> measly merchant ships. All right, well, this is where the fun begins, I suppose. Let's dive deeper. Yeah. Hopefully we can get out of this one. I don't want to lose our new boat right at the start. Even though we missed our first shot with it. It's slightly embarrassing. That's interesting. It shows our uh, maximum range. I like that. It's a nice feature. Hello, shirtless man. Let's make sure everybody... <sighs> Keybinds. Yeah, damage control team is on deck, which is good. And he's probably about to drop his eggs all over us. Passing the thermal layer, though. That should help us out a little bit. Thanks, weapons officer, for that. That really just made my day so much better. Still trying to figure out what went wrong here. Maybe they were just going much faster. It seems like they uh, did accelerate. And that <laughs> torpedo is still circle running. And we just saw the wakes really early on. Hmm. 
I was fairly confident in that solution. It is. I, I think they did start accelerating though. They started going faster after I uh, sped them out. And it looks like he's coming in for his attack. Right across our uh, bow. Let's see. Oh, hello. And he's dropping his step charges. Well. I think we'll be okay. Now, in real life, <laughs> uh, the Japanese weren't setting their depth charges nearly deep enough at the beginning. Uh, they didn't realize the American boats could go this deep. Until they intercepted a, uh, I don't know, it was a report, an American report. The guy pretty much said, there's nothing to worry, our subs aren't in danger. Uh, the Japanese aren't setting their depth charges uh, deep enough. And uh, the Japanese got that, started setting their depth charges deeper, and immediately after that, the Americans started losing more and more subs because of that. And uh, that just goes to say, loose lips sink ships, I suppose. Anyway, we are uh, we have provoked the bee's nest, so we will try to get out of here. Uh, I don't think we'll make a second pass on these guys. It seems a little risky for the payout. And I've already <laughs> launched three torpedoes. Uh, at this convoy, so I think we'll get away scot-free though. Uh, so let's go ahead and continue on our course, which is pretty much due north, and uh, get the hell out of Dodge. Um, I'm going to evade these guys, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next episode, I suppose. I'll cut here, and uh, we'll hopefully get out of here. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next episode.